Hi guys, hi, how's it going? How are you doing today? Hopefully today finds you well. Today I'll be reviewing the Odin's Eye and Angelica Nyquist Halloween collection uh, as part of my palette roulette series here on this channel, in which I review a palette that is in my collection that might also be in your collection. It's not about the newest brand newest thing on the market. It is about getting some use out of the products that I'm bringing in the palettes that I'm bringing into my collection. And I'm excited to go over these palettes with you today. And I hope that you're excited too. Um, for those of you new here, hi, my name is Donna. I'm a lover of all things high and colorful beauty and self care. I also work in the beauty industry as a field leader for Ulta Beauty. I get a lot of education in my position. I like to bring you that education here, but ultimately I'm just out here talking about makeup because I like to talk about makeup. And I hope that you also like to talk about makeup and I'm assuming if you're here, you probably do. So I hope that you'll wanna subscribe before you go. I'm kind of a kick in the pants to hang out with. I do these palette roulette videos probably about once a month time frame really get some use out of the palettes come back to you talk to you about the good the bad the ugly the things I'm experiencing show you some swatches and get you out of here after we pick a new palette so please stay tuned if that sounds like something you're interested in let's go ahead and talk about some makeup all right all right my friends so today we are going to be discussing the two palettes that Odin's Eye and Angelica Nyquist collabed on for the um Halloween holiday they are called the Halloween collection because they did a hella collab that went so over the top amazingly uh well they decided to come out with a collection for Halloween Hela is a Norse goddess uh, that is the goddess of death and rebirth. Uh, this collection was to embody both end and beginning and the packaging design was curated by Angelica in Hella's essence of half beautiful and half skeletal. So really excited to dig into these palettes today. I'm going to handle them as one because while I typically would handle two palettes as separate palettes in here, these are both the same for the most part, except for the color story. So with that said, these are the Angelica Nyquist Odin's Eye Halloween collection in Little Ghosts, which is this guy here, and Trick or Treat, which is this guy here. This collection is a resurgence of the original Hella collection. They are 100% vegan and each one of these palettes has 16 shades. The packaging design was curated uh, by Angelica and you can see on the packaging that Angelica is the embodiment of Hella, which is half beautiful and half skeletal. They came up with these for the Americanized Halloween, right? Because nobody else does. Does anybody else do Halloween? They came up with these for the Halloween holiday and kind of made them a little bit Halloween centric, right? So you can see that there are some like pumpkins or jack-o'-lanterns, evil jack-o'-lanterns. There's some bats. There's like just this whole presence also of Halloween. The front of the packaging, this beautiful artwork, Onzai has beautiful artwork on every single one of their palettes, but these ones are a little bit scary. They're a little scary. <laughs> each one of the pack packages on the back also has the names of each one of the shadows in here, some little information about each palette, tells you that it's cruelty free, Tells you that it's vegan, gives you a shelf life, which I can't read because I'm not wearing my glasses. Tells you that each one of the palettes has 0.74 ounces. They have 16 shades, so 0.74 ounces. Each one of those shades is approximately 0.05 ounces per pan. It's approximately the same size as the ColourPop single. And one is called, like I said, Little Ghost. And the other one is called Trick or Treat. So this one, Trick or Treat, is more of your... I would say normalized color story for the Halloween holiday. Each palette does have a mirror on it, but this one is the trick or treat palette. 
And as I said, I do think that this one is a little bit more um, Halloween centric. It features definitely colors that fit within the Halloween spirit and the shades of fall. So greens, oranges, mustards, right? This one does have 4.63 stars out of five stars on the Odin's Eye website. There are 51 reviews on it. And one thing that I will say that I'm super, super happy about is Odin's Eye doesn't take those poor ratings off of their website. There were several one star reviews on this palette as well as two star reviews on this palette. I will say that this one is probably my least favorite of the two palettes. It performed even slightly worse than the other one did, but I I would say that this color here was the most disappointing because it's the only one in the palette that's listed as the multi-chrome and I really wanted it to be amazing. It is amazing in a swatch. It's just not amazing on my eyes. I do love this palette, do not get me wrong. It is largely what is on my eyes today. There's one color from the other palette on my eyes today. Other than that, it is this palette. It creates some really beautiful eye looks, but this one I would say was the one that I wasn't drawn to the most, but it is the most normal of the color stories. The other one is the Little Ghost palette and it also has the little mirror on it with the artwork around the mirror. The Little Ghost palette has an emphasis on the blues, the purples, it's highlighted with those pinks and a pop of yellow that I love and is in my eye look today. This one is the one that I pulled for the most. I really do love this color story. I had a good time with it. Y'all know that I am a color lover. This one is also, for the most part, the one that I used in my Q&A that just posted, I think a couple weeks ago at this point, maybe a week ago. I'm not really sure when this will go up. This one is what I imagine is the, the rebirth story, right? So Hela is the goddess of uh, death and rebirth, this is what I imagine is the rebirth, whereas this is what I imagine is the death, just because this is like, reminds me a lot of spring also, and this reminds me a lot of death. This does have 4.7 stars out of five stars on the Odin's Eye website with 44 reviews, and this one was my, my more favorite of the two. I would say that this one performed a little bit better than the other one only because I didn't struggle with this one at all to get the shades to stick to my eyes, to get the shimmers not to crease. There just wasn't a struggle. I would also say that this one has for every shimmer, there is a corresponding matte that I felt like made sense to the combination of the matte and the shimmer, whereas this one, I, I feel like it is kind of in that way, but also I found that I was pulling from this one a lot to make this one make sense. Not that it doesn't make sense, I just feel like these two palettes work better together, in my humble opinion. And the palettes are really great on their own, but they definitely, in tandem, work really, really well to make it so that you don't get bored with an eye look. This one I also found a lot less boredom from than this one. It, I felt like I needed to do the same eye look out of this one almost all the time. It, it was either greens or it was these more like burgundy tones here is like a monochromatic eye look or it was a sunset eye. <laughs> That's what I got from this. This one I think sparked my creativity just a smidge bit more. Like I could go blues, I could go purples, I could go pinks, I could go kind of a rainbow, I could, could get a cotton candy, I could get just about anything out of this. And I loved pulling every single shade in this palette, even this like kind of gray toned purple that was very, very ashy, looked beautiful on my skin as a, a brow bone or an inner corner highlight. So, and also this pop of yellow was fantastic for an inner corner highlight. So what I would say about these palettes in and of themselves is that this year was the first time I had tried Odin's Eye. I found that these performed very, very similarly to the Odin's Eye collab that I picked up earlier this year, the Planet Spirit Club with the three different creators, Lauren May Beauty Makeup Just For Fun and 
Batty Bean, these were no different. So definitely a consistency across their formulations for their shadows. Each one of these palettes had a combination of four finishes. They had mattes, shimmers, metallics, and a duochrome. There was only one duochrome listed in each one of the palettes, but all of the shimmers included multifaceted, multi-colored shimmers in them. So many of them performed as if they were a multi-tone shimmer on my lid. Um, there are nine mattes in each one of these uh, 16 shadow palettes, which is fantastic because I like to use a lot of mattes in my looks. And I know that Angie also likes to use a lot of mattes in her looks. So I, I wasn't afraid that they weren't going to have enough mattes in them. And I appreciate the mattes that were in each palette. They typically made a lot of sense to the shimmers that were in the palettes. And both of them will go from very, very light to very, very deep, which is also another like prerequisite for Angie for what she loves in palettes. So I knew that they were going to work really good on their own, but I just find them to work better together for the variation, specifically the variation in the trick or treat palette, because I didn't feel like it had a whole lot of different eye looks that I could pull from it. The mattes in here blend really, really well, just like with the um, Perfect World palettes. Um, they're not super like buttery to the touch, but they're also not super grippy like a pressed pigment would be, and I did not find them to stain at all. What I did see though is that there was some pretty significant noticeable uh, voiding with some of the shadows and this one specifically. Um, again, trick or treat palette here. And I think that's why this one was not my favorite is because it did give me the most grief. There is some voiding completely along this eye look and the orange that I had to go in on both sides and kind of pat the pigment from the orange onto that space and just call it good. No blending, no nothing. So if you get super, super close, I'm sure that you could see that there's just chunks of orange powder on my eyelid because it just wouldn't stay. In addition to that, in the corners of my eye where I do have some issues with, you know, makeup or, you know, eyeshadows kind of going away because my eyes tend to water a lot. This one just didn't take period in the corners of my eye and in the inner corners. So in this eye look and in many eye looks that I, I did when utilizing this palette, I would have like an extra thick like eyeliner blended into whichever color that I was using in that inner corner to cover up some of that voiding that occurred with this palette. And the mattes in this palette specifically are really, really firmly pressed. And I don't know why there's a difference in the, the press from palette to palette, but I am thinking that that might be what part of the problem is with this palette. I don't know that that's something that everybody else experienced. Maybe I just got a dud, I'm just not sure. I do like the palette, it's just not my favorite. I did have to finesse it a little bit more. In addition to that, the uh, fallout with this palette was pretty significant actually, but I mean, not horrible, you could, you could brush it away. But this shimmer specifically that should be amazing and looks amazing on a finger swatch, looks amazing um, going onto the skin. It's supposed to be the multi-chrome in this palette and therefore I wanted to use it so, so often, but every single time I used it, it creased on me and bad, not just a little bit bad. And I didn't find that to be true for any of the other shimmers in this palette or this palette. I don't know if it's just more moist than some of the other shimmers in this palette or what, but it, it creased really, really bad to the extent that, you know, I tried it one or two times, tried it without a primer, tried it with a glue, and then decided that I just wasn't going to wear it anymore. <laughs> so there's that. Besides this one, the fallout in these palettes is pretty par for the course, right? You can just brush it away and it's fine. Happens upon application, but not throughout the day. And with the shimmers, as long as you're using a glitter glue, they don't travel anywhere. 
they don't crease except for that green and they don't fall out throughout the day. I loved playing with these palettes together so, so much. And I love playing with this one on its own. I got bored with this one pretty quickly. So with that said, besides this green, I'm gonna show you some swatches of some of my favorites in here. Mostly because there are, you know, 32 shadows total. And I don't think that y'all wanna sit around and watch me swatch 32 shadows. But I am gonna swatch a lot of these shimmers because we like us some shimmers, right? So in this palette, I have this shimmer in the first row, these two shimmers, these two shimmers, and these two shimmers. So I'm gonna give you all of those. So this one, first and foremost, is called Ominous. And that is a beautiful purple with some blue reflect in it from the shimmers in that one. And then this one is called Zombies. And oh my gosh, such a beautiful like light lavender that kind of has this gold reflect to it. So they're not labeled as the multi-chromes, but man, they sure do have some shiftiness, don't they? And then we have this one, which is called Boo. And it is probably one of my favorite ones to use, even though it feels and looks a little bit lackluster. It was just such a gorgeous topper and a really pretty way to put a little extra dimension into any of the eye looks that I did. It's pink, but it's got a very like clear base to it. So it doesn't really look pink unless you, you turn your head just so, and then it definitely has a little bit of pinkiness to it. Then we have Cobweb, which is kind of a white gold. Really pretty, really stark, was really beautiful as an inner corner highlight and creepy, which is kind of like this slaty blue. Oh my God, look at how beautiful that is. The multi-chrome in the little ghost palette is called Magical, and it truly is magical and inspiring. And that is it right there, that kind of red to peach, really beautiful. And then this one is called Screech, and Screech is definitely more of an orange. So that is all of the shimmers out of the Little Ghost palette. I gotta tell you, like I had so much fun using this palette, even the mattes in this palette that I didn't think I was gonna love, I absolutely love. This one is kind of like a gray uh, lavender shade and it is so pretty in an eye look as like an inner corner highlight or even a brow bone highlight. It just has that little hint of lavender to it that's almost not there and looks like it's gonna be too gray for your eyes. But this is the really uh, appropriate like gray toned but light enough gray and just enough kick of a different color in it that it just produce such a beautiful, lovely shade on the eyes. I didn't think I was going to love this light blue either, and it became one of my favorite shades to blend out with. It's just a really beautiful baby blue. And when you think in terms of like how I feel for pastels, I really did not feel like I was going to love those shades, but I absolutely did. And this one here was a shocker to me because it it looks like kind of a, I don't know, kind of a deep, deep brown in the packaging, but also like on the screen, mm, on the screen, it definitely looks more purple. It is a beautiful like eggplanty color that just is almost black, but on blend out, it is such a beautiful, beautiful shade of purple and goes so, so well with the other purples in this palette. Like it was what I used to deepen up so many of my eye looks because it was just such a beautiful shade. So the Trick or Treat palette, we have these two here are a shimmer. This one's a shimmer. These two here, but I already swatched this one for you. And then these two here. This is more of a topper down here and it is what's in my eye look 
today on the inner portion um, throughout most of the lid space and it's odd because it looks very very golden in my eye look right now but it is kind of green so I'm interested to see what it looks like on swatch because I don't think I've swatched it but the first one is Mummy's Curse and it is kind of like a really pale yellow and then we have Full Moon which is more of a golden yellow. Then we have Deadly, which is also in my eye look today, shockingly, and it is a beautiful orange. Then we have Trick or Treat. Definitely a red, but it's got like this really beautiful like blue shimmeriness to it that kind of makes it look copper kind of brown and this is one of those shadows that I was like wait this isn't a multi-chrome because it definitely looks multi-chromatic and it looks multi-chromatic in the pan as well as on your eyelid uh, the next one is Crypt Keeper and it is another one that I thought was going to be multi-chromatic and this one is the one that feels the most grippy in the pan and it was honestly one of my favorites to use how amazing is this shade? Love that shade. And then this one is the one that's in my eye look today that is called Magic Potion and it is a mint green. It's right here. This one is Witch's Brew. This one is Magic Potion. It is a mint green and it is just it's got this really beautiful like silver reflect and on my hand though I feel like it comes across as a mint green to silver now on my eyes it's like gold like a white gold it's so weird to me it's very very strange with that said there wasn't really any kind of um there wasn't any stand out mattes in this one except for this uh, this lime green here, which was truly a lime, lime green shade. Truly beautiful. Um, I had plenty of green eye looks that I utilized this palette to accomplish. Because green is my favorite color. Um, but I always, always would swing in something from the Little Ghost palette to really help me accomplish with this palette what I was going for. The most used shade in this palette is probably going to be this this one here, which is just really a cream tone matte called Wicked. And then this one here called uh, Goblin, which is a really deep brown. And then I would even venture to say this one here called Cemetery. It is actually also in my eye look today. Really great regular old colored eyeshadow. I would say though that I definitely liked the Little Ghost palette better and it might just be because I am who I am. I just reminded myself of Popeye. But really beautiful shimmers in the Owns Eye brand. I think they're standouts. Their mattes are really good, don't get me wrong. I like them better than a lot more mattes out there. I just kind of struggled with the Trick or Treat palette. In the grand scheme, everything that I've tried from the brand thus far, I definitely like their shimmers more than their mattes and would, would buy them for their shimmers alone. So with that said, each one of these palettes is probably going to, honestly, is probably going to be ranked fairly high in my end of year ranking of the palettes that I tried this year. I would say though that obviously the Little Ghost palette is going to come in further up than the little than the Trick or Treat palette, but they're both going to fit into kind of that green category for me in terms of ranking the palettes that I tried this year. I'm going to go pick another palette or palettes to work on for the next however long and I will be right back. I've got some palettes that I'm really excited to use, but I also purchased this like eons ago and the other one I got in gratis eons ago. So I need to make sure <laughs> that I use them as well and not just continue to pull for the things I'm excited to use that might be relevant or 
you know, still relevant. I don't think that either one of these is relevant at all, but I am going to pull for the ABH Cosmos palette. This is a palette that I bought when it first launched. It is really light, but I do think that it also reads very winter in my humble opinion. So I do think that it is appropriate for the season. So I'm gonna try it. I've heard really good, good things about the ABH Cosmos palette. I am also going to bring in another palette just because I've got so many that I need to get through that it doesn't make any sense for me to just do one palette at a time at this point in time. So I am also going to bring in the Urban Decay Naked Smiley. This is a collab palette between Urban Decay and Smiley Face, I do believe. And um, I did get this in gratis last FLC, which at this point is like nine months ago. So I do think that it goes really well with the Cosmos palette. I don't think that there's redundancy. I think that this one definitely has some deeper, darker tones and also some lighter tones than than what you're seeing in the Urban Decay Smiley palette. Um, I do think that they'll complement each other very, very well. So I am going to bring in both of these palettes for the next God knows how long until I decide that I'm done playing with them. I've used every shadow until I can't use every shadow anymore and that either I'm sick of them or I don't like them or I love them. So it's usually we're typically kind of rolling through this palette roulette about once every month ish. So with that said, let me know if you guys have these palettes and if you do how you feel about these palettes you will see these again in my end of year ranking all the palettes that i had tried in 2023 all of my end of year videos come in january i don't like to sell myself short a, a full month of utilizing products to come up with my thoughts and opinions on um, best of the year prior worst of the year prior palette ranking year of empties i don't like to sell myself short so You'll see all my end of year videos come in January. So you will see these again show up in my ranking all the palettes I tried in 2023 video coming very, very soon. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on those palettes. And if you've used the other two, if you've used the Urban Decay Smiley or the Cosmos palette, because they're not new, I would love to hear your thoughts on those as well. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I appreciate every single one of you for being here. I hope that you and yours are well, that you are all safe, healthy, and getting along as best you can. Um, I hope that you are all rolling through the holiday season as mentally stable as you absolutely possibly can be. And if you're seeing this after the holidays, you'll see it sometime before Christmas or between Christmas and New Year's. If you're seeing this, and you're not getting through the holiday season very well, hit me up. I'm on Marco Polo. You can hit me up in the comments section. I would be happy to have a conversation with you guys. I feel your pain. I also am in that place. So um, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope that you and yours are well, that you are all loving each other, but loving each other from afar. And until next time, bye friends.